Suzanne Duncan, according to State Street's Love of Money survey, the more they love money, the more they lose. So what's going on there? We surveyed 3,600 individual investors across 20 countries, and we found exactly that, which is entirely counterintuitive. Counter the more people love money, the more money they lose. How is that so? And we found when we uncovered you know, some of the research here that the individuals that scored high on the love of money scale, they make worse financial decisions and then they have worse financial outcomes as a result. And money lovers are less likely to save according to your survey. That certainly sounds counterintuitive. Yes, less likely to save. And the reason for this is that they're the high lovers of money, they have this emotional attachment to money and it exacerbates their behavioral biases, which we can get into. And, and there are a whole slew of behavioral biases that we uncovered with these high lovers of money. They're more prone to greed. Another thing that the survey brought out, that makes sense when you think of Scrooge McDuck and all these <laughs> greedy people. So uh, why don't you explain that one? Yeah, so greed, so this one of the behaviors that we saw in spades was a high susceptibility to greed and equally important fear-based motives. On the greed side, if the markets gain significant value, these individuals are more likely to buy. And if the markets lose significant value, they're more likely to sell. And of course, we know how this story ends, right? Marketing market timing never ends well when it comes to individual investors. They inevitably buy high and they sell low. And this actual... Um it gets better with age, though, I should say. Now, is that because that these money lovers, they have more by when they get older? They've, uh, or is it because they learn that money doesn't solve all their problems? Interestingly enough, it's not because they have more money. It is as individuals age, they become, to become much more aware that there are more important things in life than money. And so we found a, a large dichotomy between the younger, say, the millennial generations and then, say, the baby boomer generations and their affinity for lack thereof money. And, um, yeah, it's very interesting when you look, peel back the layers of the data, too, that <clears throat> we see this, too, country by country, where some of the countries that have a younger demographic, such as India and China, um, they, too, have a very high love of money. You know, India ranks number one in terms of its highest level of love of money. China ranks number two. And then finally, how does State Street use this information to help people become better investors, better savers? Yeah, Maybe less money loving. <laughs> so here's the key here. You cannot make someone become less money loving. So that's, that's point number one. There's, there's a, a nature component to this that is, that is real and it's very much grounded in the culture, which could be part of the nurture you know, environment. Um, so the recommendation here is to focus on the goal, not the money. And money, as we all know, is just a means to an end, but it's not an end in and of itself. So, so if you can ask yourself very important questions, like what do I really want my retirement to look like? Put yourself in that moment. What do I want my child's education to look like? And what that does is it creates something that is very abstract, right? A long-term goal that is distant, far away into the future. And it puts you in that moment so that you overcome some of your behavioral biases, such as short-termism, these greed and fear-based motives, and you can make much better, much healthier financial decisions as a result. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Suzanne. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.